So I see a lot of people saying that they want to get into PKing, but they don't know where to actually start or their account is not good enough for PvP. So today I'm going to show you how to make a brand new PKing account in less than one day. Now there are of course two different ways of doing this, the cheap way and the expensive way. I'm going to be doing the expensive way, but I'm going to be showing you how to do the cheap way. And keep in mind the expensive way is pretty much only like anywhere from four to eight hours faster. So technically speaking, you don't really even need to do the expensive way. It's just if you want to get PKing faster, you do the expensive way. But I would say it's definitely worth it to do the cheap way if you don't have that much GP. Also, the account we're going to be building is a ranged G mauler since it is one of the easiest builds to actually get into PKing with. By the way, with the expensive way, you still don't actually need to have the items that I bring. I just do that for Fashionscape. And of course, it does give you a little bit better XP, but you don't need to actually have those items. But if you do want to buy them and use them, you can just sell them after and not really lose much GP at all on them. So I am going to be doing a list of quests that are going to get all of my initial stats super fast for me. The first one is just, I think it's Imp Catcher. Yeah, it's just Imp Catcher. You go here. I literally have no stats yet. Give them the little imps or give them the little beads. See, there you go. I already got myself eight magic right away. I mean, I, you really don't even need magic for this build that I'm going for, but you can get quite a few levels if you really want to. So that's why I'm just going to get a bunch of quests out of the way. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is Witch's Potion. So this should get me like 10 or 11 magic right here. Yeah, 10 magic. All right. So now I want to go get myself... Probably Vampire Slayer done. I'll go do that next. Die! Yeah. Really easy quest. So that gives you 20 attack. Wow. Up next, we are going to get ourselves... Yeah, Witch's House. It's for HP. Because then we can do Waterfall a lot easier. I mean, we can do Waterfall right now. But, like, may as well have an easy time with it. There we go. 20 magic. I pretty much just wanted that so I can wear the wizard boots when I go into the house. Here you go, dumb kid. Don't kick it over there again. All right, now you get HP. That's a decent amount of HP. Now we can actually confidently do a waterfall quest. All right, that's another easy quest done. I don't even know what attack level it's going to get me. It's 33. Now we got to go go... Wait. 26 combat already. I'm going to go do fight arena now, and then I can get quite a few more quests done as well. But already... We're getting ourselves a pretty decent amount of levels. That's why I love Waterfall Quest. By the way, for everyone who does the fight arena, you don't actually need to fight the general at the end, General Kazard. You can literally just click on the door twice and leave. You just have to kill the bouncer and then you're good to go and you can actually complete the quest. And there we go. That is the quest complete. We got thieving experience. You got 14 thieving from that? And we have 38 attack from that already. <laughs> this is so good. You don't need to even train to get yourself uh, 40 attack. I still have other quests I need to get done, like Grand Tree, Death Plateau, and Tree Gnome Village. Just because I'm lazy, I'm taking this shortcut. <laughs> yep. Yep, 41. See? Who actually needs to train a 41 attack the normal way? No one. That's who. So you could do agility the normal way, but I'm going to do agility a little bit differently. Since I only need 25 for the next quest, which is the Grand Tree, what I'm going to do is get the Taurus Trap done. But for that, I am going to need 10 Fletching and 20 Smithing. And 20 Smithing actually takes a little bit of time. And the point of this is to reduce the amount of time that you would spend doing agility. Because I don't want to go around in circles for like 45 minutes to get 25 agility. So what I am going to do, I am going to get the Knight Sword quest done for the mining. And then 10 Fletching really should not take that long at all. So for the Knight Sword, you need 10 mining. And to get 10 mining, you can do Doric's quest. And you just need to have yourself... Six clay, four copper ore, two iron ore. There you go. And that's 10 mining right there. And now we can go do the knight's sword. There we go. And that's the smithing done. So now we can go do Taurus Trap. Here we go. 10 Fletching. I did it like really slow too, to be honest, but I don't really mind. Yeah, so for those who didn't know, you don't actually need to talk to Anna. You can literally just put her in a barrel and be fine. No problem. Here we go. So again, instead of actually doing agility... We just get agility done like that, and now we have our level. So now we can go and do ourselves the Grand Tree, right? Yeah, that's quite a decent amount of attack experience as well. I like how my strength is just kind of lackluster, lackluster a lot. What? Yeah. Anyway, now we have to do our second to last quest, Tree Gnome Village. And I lied. Death Plateau. Yep, that one. Here we go. Now we can wear climbing boots, and we have ourselves another attack level. Easily enough. All right. So now I just want to get myself the last quest, Dwarf Cannon, so I can get my range level up. I technically can get like 70-something ranged. Although I don't know if I'm going to go all the way with it, because I kind of don't want to 
do it that long. There we go. Now we can use a cannon. So one aspect of having a pier is getting myth gloves, but a lot of people don't actually realize the difference between myth gloves and a combat bracelet. So they both give a plus six melee strength bonus, which is what you're even using it for anyway. And the difference is myth gloves will give you more defense, but less uh, attack whereas the combat bracelet gives you more attack and less defense. So I would say that it's more worth to actually just use the combat bracelet anyway. Look at this guy. This guy is level 72 with a court pet. Wow. Unfair. Dude also has 99 Slayer. Wow. That guy is actually a beast. This got myself 20 ranged uh, at cows. But dude, look at this look. We're looking good. That's all I'm saying. This is a hot look right now. Listen, I know most people know this, but there are people that surprisingly don't know. The fastest way to get the rock crabs, a relica, is not to go around this way. You can literally take the shortcut behind the bank and go over here. I guess you technically save time cutting across Testicle Lake here, but... Yeah, it's, it's a lot faster. If you are going to train your account at East Rock Crabs, then I just want to show you where you can go to a bank really quick to get more food. I want to show you what I normally do when I train my range here. You can just pretty much run right in here. I think it's like a four, five minute cutscene or something like that. But you can get a, a bank. You have to watch this little cutscene for like three minutes, but you get to use the bank over here if you run out of food. I'm like literally bound to miss every prominent level in like whenever I record. I'm bound to miss every prominent level, but now we have 40 ranged. I gotta go get more food real quick. But look how ballin' we're looking right now. We look like we know what we're doing. Hey, do you know what time it is? 9.20 PST. No, it's actually time to hop. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that to him. Find another world. There we go. 60 strength. We're gonna be done with our strength level for now because we really don't need to level it up much anymore. I did take a little bit of a break from training range, although I am gonna go finish it now. Uh, the one thing I will say about training on Sand Crab Island is that you get your spot stolen as a low level quite often so what i did quite a few times is get up my main ran there and kept attacking the crabs that they stole from me until i got them to hop which i mean admittedly it's like 10 15 minutes of time but dude i got pretty salty if people steal my spot at sand crabs so the thing about the way this account is built i'm going to be able to keep 48 combat and if i wanted to i could get myself a lot higher range levels as well as mage levels and still maintain level 48 combat I could get, and I shit you not, 73 magic as well as 73 ranged, and I would not gain a single combat level. I would be one attack level, one HP, one defense, one range, one magic, or two prayer levels away from actually getting a combat level. So, what I am going to be doing, I don't technically need to even stay here until 73, which I'm don't really plan on it anyway. The idea of this account is to build it as fast as possible and go and have fun while I learn to try to PK on it. So the spot I'm in right now, I'm actually training. I get 40k experience an hour, somewhere thereabouts. It's on Zaya. If you check right here, I mean, the quickest way to even get here is you go to Lands End, then you run up, and it is northwest of the Shazing House, kind of uh, north of the graveyard. It's right here. You can uh, set it up in a few spots. I saw a YouTube video on it. It was uploaded by a guy with the name Nocturnal RS. I'll actually link the video down below because I want to give credit where credit is due. I didn't find the spot. This guy actually found this spot. But this is the perfect place to actually train because you can literally just sit here AFK, and most of the time they're not able to attack you <laughs> as he attacks me. But look. If you get attacked, you can literally just move right here. And let's say you're not trying to actually kill him. I don't mind if I actually gain an HP level. It's not a big deal. I can literally just kill this guy. Or I can just stay right here and let the cannon kill everybody else. Or just keep hitting everybody else. And then I can just walk in. Fire walk out. So if you aren't actually looking to cannon anything and you want a little bit of a cheaper method as to AFK training your range, do not buy iron knives because iron knives currently are around 59 each. What you should buy is mithril darts because mithril darts sit around 33 GP each and you can buy a lot more. And for that cost, you're going to get a lot more range training experience out of it. Plus, you don't even need an Avas. So if you are taking the cheaper route to train your new Count. What I would say is bring your myth darts, bring like 10k cash, 
bring some food and then you come over to Jarvald in Relica and you travel. Obviously, since this is not the same account, I'm able to just travel for free since I got the quest done. I'm a Fremenic, but it would cost you 2k normally if you are not a Fremenic to travel here. Then there are two crab spots here that you can actually train at. Admittedly, you're probably going to have to hop worlds a few times because this has been a very popular training spot for a long time, but... There is a three crab spawn right there, and there is a two crab spawn right here. Obviously, you sit here. You can just AFK with it. It's pretty good. It's still pretty good experience an hour, but it's not better than actually training with a cannon, which is why I am personally doing it that way. Pretty close to 60. I just wanted to show you it's actually like 51, 52K experience an hour about here. All right, there we go. 60 ranged. Yeah, there we go. 61 ranged. And I got another giant key. So the method I used cost in total, I used all of these potions as well as probably not even that many, but let's just assume we use that many iron knives. So 577k with the knives and we used 13k cannonballs in the process, which is 3.3 mil to make this account. But again, let's say I didn't want to actually take the expensive route. I wanted to take the cheap route. I showed you guys what you could actually do. You would use mithril darts because they are cheaper than iron knives. So assuming that we actually took the cheap route instead of this route and we use mithril darts for all of our ranged, we could say that we'd use the same amount of potions, same amount of supplies right here, except for uh, no super combat. So let's say we'd even buy like 12,000 mithril darts. That would be in total 500k to make this account if we used 12,000 mithril darts if we didn't have an avas which i mean i'm going with a no prayer build so technically speaking you could spend a lot less if you actually go and get the avas quest done so overall i'd say it costs no more than 600k to start up here like this so if you guys do want to recoup some of the losses that you would get from training this new account then i would say either train at hill giants or moss giants because they both drop a giant key or a mossy key respectively which lets you go and kill the boss version of them which admittedly isn't really that hard both bosses have a pretty decent drop table and both bosses also have a good plus one that you could get from them which is worth anywhere between 800k and 1 mil somewhere thereabouts anyway in the next video i'm going to be showing you guys how to actually use the account in pvp what setups you would be using the mechanics behind it how you can actually make money everything so make sure you subscribe for the next video and i will see you then